that the church for many years has believed that homosexuality was a sin. And 52 years ago, right, 1968, the very first church was, was uh, kicked off and birthed and established in Los Angeles by Reverend Troy Perry, a Pentecostal preacher who was gay, who said, you know what, the scriptures say that all people can come to know Jesus Christ. And so uh, now we know, and if you don't know, you can get my book and you can learn more about it, but now we know that God doesn't condemn anyone. God doesn't condemn gay people, lesbians, right? Transgender people. God doesn't condemn anyone. Everybody can come to know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. We're all called. In fact, earlier when I was talking about Isaiah 56 and it talks about the eunuch, uh, Jesus talked about eunuchs and natural born eunuchs are just another word for gay people historically. So uh, that's a freebie. You can get my book and enjoy it and, and uh, love it and get into all of that. But God's always bringing new revelation. God's always bringing new revelation. Right now, with global warming, what's happening? People are beginning to realize that the earth is groaning. What does it say in Romans? It says that the earth is groaning, right? And so now the church is having to say, hey, we need to do something about this, right? Look at Australia. Look at what's happening there. So the church is rising up and saying, God, you know, the earth is groaning. We need to do something about this. We have to be good to our planet. So God is bringing more revelation it's already in the Word. It's just that the Holy Spirit comes and begins to take off the veil so that we can begin to see. Amen? So that's, that's uh, the hope of our calling. Number two is we need to see people all around us that God wants us to minister to. Did you know that there are people all around you that God has positioned you right where you are so that you can touch people with His love? Yeah. God has put you there, right? And so uh, the scripture there is John 4, 33. Do not say, Jesus said, four months more and then, then the, um, and then the harvest. I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They're just standing there. And Jesus said, hey, look all around you. Look all around you. God wants you to open your eyes and look all around you and see that God has planned some things for you. Amen. And there are people in your family. There's people in your neighborhood. There's people in your, uh, you know, your grocery store. There's people that you work with all around you. Open your eyes and see those are the people you're called to love and to share the love of Jesus Christ with. Amen. Last night, Janet and I, we got to go to this really fancy dinner. It's called The Hobbit, this restaurant in um, Tustin, I believe it is. And um, it, it, we went with uh, two board members and their spouses of, of our condominium association. And they invited me to be on the board a couple months ago, and so I agreed finally to, to do that as well. And so they said, let's go out for a big dinner. And so Janet and I were like, okay, great, let's go, you know. And so we went with them, and they had a car arranged. And I'm telling you, this was a dinner that started at 7 and ended at 11. We got home last night at, at midnight. Right? And it was like about, what, eight courses that had duck and it had uh, champagne. And uh, yeah, your pastor had champagne last night. Uh, you know, I should have a lot of bubbling today. But anyway, I, I didn't even know what all I ate, but I was eating it all, you know? And they had like this course, and then this course, and then this course, and then this course. And then before the main course, they said there's an interlude. Here's a little thing of sorbet to clean your palate. Then they have an interlude for 20 minutes where you go walk around, you go see the kitchen, you can go outside. It's this Mexican type hacienda type place. You can go sit outside, relax for 20 minutes. And then you come back in, you have your main course. And then your desserts, and then your drink wines, and all of that. So let me tell you something. Uh, I got home last night at midnight. I thought, well, Lord, I don't know why I was on that one, but it sure is kind of nice loving people around me. <laughs> we didn't have to pay for anything, right? These people just wanted to treat us because we were loving them. Amen? And so God wants you to love the people all around you. You might have an eight-course dinner from 7 to 11 o'clock at night, and you might get all this blessing, and you're like, why, God? It's because you're loving people all around you, right? God wants to do something in you. Uh, number three is, is that God, see God's promises come true, come to pass. Right? So God wants us to see God's promises come to pass. I'm just listing some examples of things that God wants us to see. God wants you to see your calling. God wants you to see the people all around you. God wants you to open up your eyes. God wants you to see promises come to pass. Right? Here's the story of Elijah. Right? He, he said there's not going to be rain for three and a half years, no rain. And then the Lord said there's going to be rain. So he goes to the king Ahab and says there's going to be rain. 
And then they start praying because it's not raining. Here's a prophet. And in the Old Testament, if you're a prophet and you prophesy something, it better happen or they're going to kill you. So anyway, he started praying. He said, Lord, it's in the rain right now. Lord, answer my prayer right now. So he says to a servant, go out there and see if you can see any rain. And the servant goes, no, no rain. Seven times. And then finally they saw a little cloud. How many of you know that there's a little cloud in your promise coming your direction? But you got to open up your eyes. You have to open up your eyes. God wants you to see the little cloud. God wants you to be hungering down and praying. God wants you to speak out what God has told you. And to believe that it's going to come to pass. Amen? Yesterday we were having our Saturday morning prayer time. And is it hot in here or is it just me? Yeah. It's very warm in this place. Wow. I just feel like, uh, okay, we've gotten beyond the Holy Spirit. Now it's really hot. <laughs> Sometimes when the Holy Spirit comes, it gets warm, but this is like really hot. Folks. We, we need to open up the skylights. Anyway, we were here praying yesterday. So we got over our 9 o'clock prayer on Saturday. There's just a few of us that come. And uh, we started praying. We were just worshiping the Lord. And I looked up and I saw the skylights. And we got the skylights put in as part of our renovations, right? We got the, these new skylights put in September, I think, August or September of 2018. So it's been about a year and a half or so. And I had remembered back then, um, yesterday when I looked up and I saw the skylights, I remembered that back then when we actually got the skylights, I, that first Sunday I looked up and the Lord spoke to me and said, the windows of heaven are open over your church, right? Well, that September, they finished putting the skylights and all of that, and I think a week later, we had our conference in September of 2018, and I spoke that year, and I still remember the message. A lot of times I preach, and I don't remember the message. People come up to me and say, you preached this 10 years ago. I'm like, well, that's nice, but I don't remember. I remember what I preached in September of 2018 for the All Nations Gathering, because that message still been running in my spirit because it hasn't come to pass. And so I gave a message, and in that message from Isaiah 42 that we're in the desert, but that God's bringing streams in the desert, and there were three streams that God would release. One was provision, one was justice, and one was um, life, healing and life. Well, the next week it was confirmed by Doug Addison. He came and sent me a text, and he said, uh, you're going to have provision, you're going to have a hundredfold harvest, give me Mark 10. That same morning, Scott Stinson came to preach here that morning. The same day I got the text from Doug Addison, Scott Stinson, in his message at the end, he said there's streams. In fact, there's three streams God is releasing here. And God's bringing great wealth and fame to this congregation. Right? So that all happened last September, last October. So yesterday, let me, you know, did I confuse you yet? Okay, now I'm back to yesterday. We're here for the 9 a.m. prayer, and I look up. And I see the windows, and immediately the Lord said to me, I told you the storehouse was open, and you haven't pushed through. You see, God wants us to see things come to pass, and God will speak to us and give us revelation and show us what He wants to do. He will speak over our lives, and you can speak it out. But if there's a hindrance or it doesn't come to pass right away, what do you do? You forget about it, you let it go, and then it doesn't come to pass. Right? Or it doesn't for a long, long time. We are a year and a half short of being wealthy. We're a year and a half short of having great fame. We're a year and a half short of having three streams flowing here like we've never seen before. Right? I'm just telling you what the Lord told me yesterday. So I said to everybody, hey, you guys. We just kind of started the prayer we were seeing. I said, hey, you guys, the Lord showed me this whole thing. we got to pray to get rid. Uh, I mean, we got to break through. God wants to bring the stream of provision and our people are not our people are not flourishing and prospering like God wants them to. So then Lou is there. Lou says, I see a big brick wall. Right, Lou? She said, I see a big brick wall and people have hindrances of unbelief and come in and all kinds of things have come in. And so there's a brick wall right here. And so then Debbie Carnes started saying, well, we got to pray against that brick wall. So anyway, yesterday, we broke through the brick wall. Yeah. Right? Because we're believing that what God has said, God's going to do. So I want you to stand. Because I want you to receive the provision today. How many of you need God's provision in your life? Amen? Well, we're going to release that today. 
today. So Lord, today we lift up our hands as a church and we say, God, we thank you that you spoke over us in September of, in October of 2018. You gave us a word and it was confirmed by two prophets that there would be a river, that there would be a stream of provision, that it would come into this place. And that it would break loose in this place. And it has been held back for a year and a half. But today we say that wall is down. We decree in the name of Jesus. We decree that prosperity and blessing and provision is reaching us right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you for that river of provision. I say the river of justice and the river of life. Let it flow this morning. Let it flow. this church to prosper. God wants your business to prosper. God wants you to be able to have life and more than enough for you and your family and then to bless others and to bless his kingdom. Amen? Amen. How many of you feel like you got a hold of that? Yeah. Okay, I want you just to wait around in the river for a little bit. Just get wet. Ooh, I'm going to get in the river. I'm going to go. I'm going deep into this river. River. I'm going to let the river of provision, the river of prosperity, I'm going to let it flow all over my life. Come on, splash it up. Splash it up all over you. You need it. You need it. You need it. Come on. Get it. Uh-huh. Yeah. See, I told you we're a little crazy here, but sometimes you got to do some things by faith. And a lot of times we, we don't see things until we prophetically step out and act them out. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So I see, I saw Jesus come in. He yeah. came in a little while ago. He came over and talked to me and a couple other people. But what he's saying is, how bad do you want it? You know, do we want it? Are we going to believe it? Are we going to believe that nothing that's formed against us can prosper? Or are we going to believe that his word, um, you know, never returns void? Because what we do, what I've been doing, I mean, I know what we do, we're human. We're looking left and right and everything's not kind of falling apart, you know, or it's not happening or whatever it is. You don't feel good, whatever it is. You look left, you look right, and there it all is still. Look up. So, Lord, today we just thank you for that. By the way, Joe, you were really on my heart the last couple weeks. Yeah, so I've been really praying for Joe. I've been praying for a lot of things, and I'm telling you, uh, yesterday, I saw you up on a summit. I don't know why the Lord keeps doing mountains and summits and everything else. But I'm telling you, God wants to bless you. God wants to bless you. And you've been looking down, and God wants you to look up. You've been looking at your own way of doing things, and God wants you to look up. But His favor is getting ready to be loose. So, Lord, this morning, we just say yes to you. We say yes to you. We thank you. We believe your word. We get a hold of the word of the prophets. We get a hold of provision. We get a hold of what you're saying to us, God. And we say we refuse for it to be held back anymore. And, Lord, we ask that you transform this church, even, that we can have a greater ministry because we're prospering and we can reach more people. So, Lord, we ask that we can go to all the nations. We ask, God, that we can go to more people. We ask, God, that you flourish us, that you cause us to grow, that things begin to happen, Lord, in a great way. So we thank you, God, that that river that comes through the desert, behold, I do a new thing, the Lord says. Behold, I do a new thing. I cause rivers to flow through the desert. God does things that don't make sense. God does things that don't make sense. But God can bring a river in the desert. God can bring provision in the desert. I don't know if you realize we're not going to go back to this message. <laughs> we're going to stop right there. I'm going to continue with that next week. But I felt so strongly yesterday. And... I just, you know, I think that we're on the verge of something so new and so great. We're on the verge of something.
something new and so great. And the Lord has brought all of you here. And there's more people coming. And the Lord has brought significant people here. And God is causing our faith to come together. That we can believe Him for greater things. That we can, we can say, God, you said this. We're not making this up. You said this. This is your idea. You want your church to prosper. Why? Because He wants you to prosper. Why? Because He wants you to be blessed so that you can give. And so we've got to get a hold of what He wants to do in our lives. God's tired of, of that breakthrough not coming. He wants us to see things coming to pass, right? He does. He wants us to see things come to pass in our life. So Lord, this morning we just say, Lord, we're positioning ourselves to see. Like that blind man, you're opening up our eyes, God. We, we saw things a little bit blurry at first. But Lord, right now we're seeing it really clear. You want us to prosper. We're seeing things really clear today. And there's a river of provision that's coming around my feet. It's going to get higher and higher and higher. And it comes from heaven. Just continue to open up our eyes, but today, like the blind man, we're going to look up. We're going to look up. We're going to see your face. Lord, that you love us. That you want us to know that you love us. That you want us to know that you have a purpose and a plan for our lives. And God, that you would bring provision for every vision. That's nothing to you. Lord, we're 10 years ago, we didn't have a building. And we were worshiping at a middle school. You had a vision for us to worship in a church home. And then you went above and beyond and you blessed us with this home. It's above and beyond. Lord, your plans for us are much bigger than what we can see. So God, open up our eyes. Give us God-sized plans. Let us see what you have for us. Take off the limitations. Take off every limitation that we put on you. Take off every limitation we put on ourselves. And God, open up our eyes and open up our hearts and let the spirit of wisdom and revelation just be poured out today. So that we can receive all that you want to give to us. And we thank you for that, God. We thank you for that, Lord. And Lord, I pray that you prosper, Joe. That you prosper him, that you bring him up on that summit. And Lord, that you do what you want to do through his life and his ministry and his music and his recording studio and hit play and through training folks, that you do what you want to do and you break off every limitation off of Joe's life. Lord, we give you our lives. We thank you that we're in your mighty hand. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, I love you this morning. I know it's been a little bit of a wild roller coaster ride this morning. Sometimes we go over here. Sometimes we go over there. Sometimes we go up. Sometimes we go down. Sometimes I have no idea where we're going. We just go. But we're all going together. Because God wants to do something in us this decade, this year, greater than what you've ever known before. You're not going to look back at the great days. You're going to look forward at the greater days. You're not looking backwards. You're looking forward. God's always bringing us upwards in Christ Jesus. We're not going backwards. What God has in front of you is always, hey, Pastor Sandy, I'm going to retire. Well, you retire so that you can go full time for God. <laughs> then you don't have any distractions. <laughs> you see, you're always going upwards in Christ Jesus. You've always got an assignment. There's always greater. Amen. <laughs>